keep this short and sweet. So I am Chris Subramanian. I am one of the co-founders at Jiffy.ai. Uh, we are all about enabling enterprises to look at automation and innovation in a new lens. Uh, I'll start with a short video about uh, uh, the company and then you know take you through what we believe is the way forward with the low code, no code, digital transformation, what is required for it to scale, and what are the best practices that you could adopt in this case. That's a, a quick overview of uh, you know what we believe in. Now, to start with, I know I mean in the last two days you would have heard about the pandemic and how the whole charter of priorities have changed and and some of the predictions in between the pandemic what got what Gartner made obviously reflects you know the new world of order. And uh, three things that I would like to highlight in that are you know anywhere operations which is become a reality, you don't have a choice uh, rather than embracing it, whether you are a, a financial institution, whether you outsource your financial institution activities, uh, you, you don't have a choice. Uh, the second interesting concept is around intelligent compostable businesses. So while you look at, you know, business processes, we look at, you know, way you can, you know, optimize, automate them. Uh, I think this, you know, makes it very important. You know, how do you look at how, you know, making them into smaller components, compose them into intelligent components, and finally, hyper automation. So there's been a lot of talk about RPA in the earlier panels, how we can solve, you know, some of the automation needs. While RPA is interesting and exciting, you know, hyper automation is the next level of that where, you know, RPA alone cannot transform a business process. So we'll talk about that in a bit. So if you look at, you know, automation, obviously the industry is huge. There are two, two types of automation that's, you know, coming up in an aggressive manner across the globe, right from North America, region, Asia, India, everywhere. Now that's low code and no code, right? Now the market size is quite big. By 2027, we are talking about an $87 billion market. So when you look at digital transformation, you cannot ignore this technology. Now, when it comes to, uh, you know, low code, no code. So low code is all about, you know, can I use a user interface, a graphical user interface, drag and drop and build automation. And no code is all about, can I build applications using this, right? So low code allows you to automate existing processes, if I may, using workflows, automation, intelligent OCR and things like that, whereas no code is all about no application development itself. Now, and, and, and you, you wouldn't be surprised to see that, you know, around 31% of the companies plan to execute a low code or an RPA project in the next 12 months. And I'm sure most of you are listening to it if you're a financial institution or an enterprise have already spent time, effort, you know, looking at this technology. On the flip side, right? A lot of automation projects using low code, no code, you know, there's a high probability of projects that have failed. 
uh, that's because the lack of understanding of the process while the low code technology sounds very exciting but what do you want to achieve with it is also extremely important and what it means is that uh, what 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 you figured out is that around 38 percent of those projects fail because these processes underlying when you look at, it at the surface it looks all simple hey i just need to take data lift data from somewhere and put it somewhere else but the underlying processes why they cannot be automated in a very easy manner is because of the process complexity and even in the panel where aruna was uh, talking about complexity being one of the big factors where automation fails now uh, a quick interesting fact i mean I, I love dilbert so i just thought i would present this right so it's not about being cloud native it's not moving to cloud is going to solve all your problems right i mean a lot of jargons around containers kubernetes etc floating around but there has to be a very effective strategy of how you go about automation now if you look at the current state right while you know it's exciting at the same time it's confusing when you are an, you know running an it organization a business organization within an enterprise people are talking about hey there is citizen development can i automate can i ask my uh, business users to automate so if you look at it there are bots there are connectors there are forms there are workflows, there is OCR, there is intelligent document processing. So there's a bunch of technologies available and, and that's exciting. But at the same time, how do I build a strategy that is sustainable? How do I pick a platform that can allow you to bring all these things together in a meaningful manner? And most importantly, not leave technical debt. Right? One of the reasons you know, low-code platforms exist today is the frustration that it takes a lot of time for us to build an IT, you know, in integration, right? So can I empower more for more people to build automation and, you know, transform the process. But at the same time, it leaves us all mm -hmm. with this worry of are, I, are we leaving technical debt in that process? So if you look at an RPA, BPM, OCR capability, which is, you know, one, one spectrum of low code, uh, the it is a platform, right? It's a technology available and it, it is how the users take that technology and build the automation. So while it is fast, it's quick, but at the same time, it's reasonably dirty because end of the day, while it is low code, but still some sort of business logic code is getting written on top of these applications, whether it is an RPA tool out there, whether it is a BPM tool out there. Now, when you extend this to citizen development, imagine in the next two to three years when you implement these technologies, you're going to leave a lot of technical debt when you really transform that process using uh, a different technology. Now, we had a macro problem a few years ago. I'm sure all the back office operations folks understand how macros, while they were useful, but were very difficult to transform. Similarly, now we will have a low code debt problem where you know, if you don't have a proper governance, proper plan in place, you will end up you know, having a high technical debt. So at this point, I'd like to introduce us a little bit. So we are all about providing an app-based experience to your process automation problems. And we combine low code, no code to create extremely engaging customer experience in applications and at the same time, an autonomous middle office back office experience so automate a process end to end don't automate a task using low code can you build an app that can all encompass the process itself so been working with a few global organizations we are 170 people team size we have offices in bangalore and toronto in india and palo alto in the us we have been recognized as a disruptor in the low code no code space by some of the industry analysts out there now our view about an enterprise automation platform using low code, no code has to have a scalable architecture. So you don't want bots running in individual users desktops, which is going to be a nightmare in a couple of years time. You need to have complete insight on what automations are going on across the inter enterprise. You need to be cloud ready. So we are a cloud ready platform, cloud native platform that can be deployed on the cloud or on premise. But at some point of time, I'm sure all enterprises will move to a cloud cloud first approach and provide a unified data flow experience and a user interface to handle exceptions, handle data of different types, whether they are structured, unstructured, etc. So that's how we look at you know enterprise automation. And one thing that's important, right? I mean, if you look at today's modern day enterprise, you have a digital layer, which is the modern day modern applications. 
you have the legacy enterprise applications you have the legacy mainframe applications out there uh, and there are humans they are operating them even the applications that were built in the early 2000s were built with the assumption that humans would operate them now we have introduced a concept called hyper apps now hyper apps are you know autonomous applications and we see them as the future where you will have limited human supervision and whether it is a front end experience or the back office operations you will apply technologies of low code no code to automate them with a human in the loop supervision so you are eliminating the need for mundane activities where a human has to operate the application so using a combination of automation machine learning document processing etc you will be able to automate 85 to 90% of a business process now uh, in in terms of how how this would look like uh, in 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 an enterprise landscape and, and this is how our platform looks like is you will have an integrated approach to use workflows bpm analytics automation and integrations right end of the day if you have an sap system you have a core banking system the first option you want to do is try to integrate using an api if not go through the screens right go through rpa so the integration firm frameworks are flexible enough and at the same time if you see there will be a, there has to be a data layer in this there has to be a system of records when you are looking at automation there has to be a low code app development framework and there has to be a customer facing or an operational facing interface so we at gfi.ai in a hyper app combine all these things and provide a seamless experience for enterprises to build the new age applications or do process automation at scale now if you look at where in the ecosystem you know this place you have the infrastructure they could be on prem on the cloud you have core systems like your crms core banking systems erps you have the new age i mean api based integrations already existed you have the new age you know low code capabilities like rpa workflow intelligent document processing and then you know what we believe is using these capabilities build whether we at gfi.ai we have launched a bunch of hyper apps say for invoice processing for our customer onboarding for incident management similarly we are enabling our customers and partners to build hyper apps using our integration layer which provides capability to run all of this so we are a platform that you know allows you using low code build automation at scale but more importantly allows you to render them as apps within your enterprise so you will have a set of onboarding apps a customer service apps back office apps you know easily built using low code no code at the same time robust enough so that you know you can actually get business users to manage and maintain them and empower the citizen development philosophy that you know these technologies promise so some of the examples of hyper apps that you can build into an enterprise if you look at trade finance or if you look at mortgage processing today the amount of time that takes to you know you know complete a trade finance activity between two banks or a mortgage approval or an invoice processing or an onboarding is in days if not in weeks a home loan approval still takes weeks to do it that is because there is a number of documents that you need to process there is a lot of interactions that you need to do with customers so while there are fintechs on one side that provide capabilities to do that and you know enterprise applications on the other side that are trying to get there what we believe is somewhere a mid path of hyper apps where and you know large financial institutions can use our technology and build these hyper apps using low code no code so it is not about task automation it is not about process automation it is about building a customer facing app that solves a specific problem so if just taking the example of uh, a trade finance scenario right from when the documents are shared by the bank extracting data from it using ocr applying machine learning to understand the data and then finally processing that is something that we can do and bring in a human in the loop for exception management and things like that so what you see on the right side are a bunch of apps that you can build on the platform uh, i mean centrally managed accessed using a browser in, you know can be on the cloud or on so just to summarize some of the benefits that you get is once you have a hyper app and you want to implement it you are spending 20% time to customize an existing capability 
So it takes very less time to deliver an end-to-end -end capability using low-code, no-code. And it is a true SaaS model. So you are not saying I have to buy a bunch of licenses, then buy a, bring a bunch of consultants and build it. You could you know, use the platform in a true SaaS model where you end up you know, paying per invoice or per trade you know, that you process. It's a per transaction usage-based SaaS, true SaaS pricing model. And because it is built in such a way, that you know it has got a configuration layer on the platform where business users can configure the various features of the app that you build it becomes easy to maintain and it's a self-service capability once you build the app so everybody in the ecosystem has a role play, role to play whether they are the rpa coe developers whether they are the business users or they are the process consultants all of them have a role to play in building the hyper app now we've been implementing this for a few customers across the globe. Some of, you know, one of the largest airline in the US uses our platform to build automation. One of the largest manufacturers of trucks in Europe uses our invoice processing hyper app. We have, you know, one of the largest wealth management platform using our platform, telecom companies using it for incident management hyper apps and, and in retail. So it's a horizontal platform at the same time, you know, you could build specific hyper apps that solve a specific problem using low code, no code. So that's a quick summary of, you know, what we do and what we can do for, you know, uh, financial institutions and enterprises. Uh, happy to take any questions if you have time. I just thought, you no, know, we are running late. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, I keep it short and sweet as I promise. So happy to take any questions.